Hey y'all, it's Betsy from Happily Ever After Etc. And I'm back with another resin video. So today I'm going to be showing you a technique that you can use to make those pretty ocean waves out of resin. You can use this to do all kinds of projects. I've made a large window. I've made little seashells. You can make a big painting. You can do a cutting board, whatever you want. It's the same technique, just depends on what you put it on. <laughs> Can't think of the word. It is really sunny out here today, which is why I'm doing summer projects and we are going to get started. So for this project, you are going to need resin. You're going to need your respirator, your heat gun. I use two heat guns for this one. My small Wagner HT 400. I need to like get that tattooed on my palm so I can remember it and a larger Ferno Wagner heat gun because I need a small heat gun with heat to pop the bubbles but not move the resin and then a larger heat gun to come back in and pop all the bubbles, not pop all the bubbles. I already said that to move the resin to create the waves. That's what I was thinking. <laughs> you also are going to need respirator, your safety gloves. You're going to need little containers. I did a large glass window and I only used about 450, 500 milliliters. So I did, one large mixing cup and then I poured it into five smaller cups. The five smaller cups are all your different colors. So clear, no color for that. White alcohol inks. You're gonna need a light teal, a dark teal, and a navy colorant. I just used craft or chalk paints for those and it works beautifully. So pretty. That is really about everything that you're gonna need. So we're gonna get started. I'm showing you how to do this on a larger window so that you can actually see how it works, but you can do this on a small scale. You can do this on a larger scale. Go crazy. Let's do it. All right, y'all, voiceover Betsy here, and we are going to jump right into this. So to start, you'll wanna gather all your materials, starting with your shells. I have a few larger white lace coral pieces then a few medium shells. These are just little scallops and tiny conches that work pretty with your design. You can use however many of these you like or don't like. It's completely up to you. To finish it off, I have a couple small shells. These are in blues and greens and teals, which should work really nice with our piece. You can get these literally on the beach if you have some left over from a vacation or if you're going on vacation, that's even better. But um, these particular shells I grabbed off Amazon because I'm running low on beach shells. So they are easy enough to order if you don't live near a beach. <laughs> I also have a few tiny starfish, which I do use later. All right, sand, you can grab real sand from the beach. These I got from a craft store and we're going to start with the white. So in an effort to not pour the entire bottle onto my window, I'm just using the cap to kind of distribute it. And I'm going to put some, the bottom half corner of that left lowest pane and that will be our beach. And this particular piece, the waves are going to go up towards the top right corner. So simply start putting out your sand. You want to kind of sprinkle it and I'm going to have it go from the deepest in the bottom left corner and it's going to gradually go downwards towards the water. Ideally, the water itself, the clear and the lightest teal will cover this lowest layer of sand. But since we will have that clear over the beach, we want the sand to be below it. Now I'm going to go ahead and sprinkle in some teal and this is just extra, it's just a little pop of color. I do want to note that after all is said and done and this piece was finished, you could hardly see the teal. So if you're going to do it, use a lot more than I did. You can't even see it when it's all finished. <laughs> Alright, so now we're just going to start playing with our shells. I know that I want to use this large scallop. Um, coral piece but I'm not sure about the smaller pieces so I just kind of start playing with them and seeing what I like I try a scallop and a conch combination I try a few smaller pieces I'm not really in love with how this looks 
It doesn't look bad, but I just don't like how they're not fitting together properly. So I'm going to go ahead and take that up. Of course, every time you put down a shell, it does mess up the sand a little bit. So be careful of that. I'm going to try a few of the small blue shells, but I end up not loving that either. And this is completely up to you. I just wanted a few shells. I've seen people who fill the beach with shells and it looks beautiful. So go ahead and go crazy. I'm going to add a little more sand just to smooth out the beach since I've completely torn it up now. Perfect. Much better. <laughs> and I'm going to break out the big guns and use this small starfish. And it looks so cute. I love how it layers over the coral. So now I'm just going to add a few small pieces. I really wanted to use those colorful shells. I think I went with two on either side. That way it was a little balanced. Perfect. I just love how cute they are. They're a nice pop of color too. All right, so that's the finished design. I'm going to go ahead and pick up all my shells because I finally decided on what I wanted. And we are going to get started with the resin. So for this first piece, I believe I mixed about 500 milliliters, maybe 450. I decided I wanted about 100 milliliters per pane of glass, and I'm going to do four. And then you'll need some for the white. So go ahead, pour about 200 of A, 200 of B in your cup and mix. This is a lot, so I'm going to mix it a little longer than normal, about three or four minutes. You can see that I'm speeding it up like a crazy person. Make sure you actually stir your resin slow and steady from the bottom. Scrape the sides. Don't stir it like a crazy person. This is not real life. This is video land where things can be sped up 630%. My hand would hurt if I did like this in real life. All right. So the bad part about mixing so much resin in one cup is that the more resin you have in a cup, the hotter it will get faster. So once you've got it mixed, you want to separate it out into your smaller cups as quickly as possible. So go ahead and put a little bit of paint. There you go. Just a drop or two in each cup. I've used this dark teal and the light teal, the navy and the white. I'm going to go ahead and put about 100 milliliters at each of the small cups in the navy and the light teal and the dark teal. The white I've already put about 50 milliliters in at the beginning because I find alcohol ink goes best into resin, not into an empty cup. Now go ahead and stir again. You're going to mix slowly from the bottom until you stop seeing streaks in your resin. When you're seeing streaks, it means the paint's not quite mixed in yet. And you want to keep to a ratio of about 10% paint to your resin. So that's why we only need a couple drops. Perfect. Okay, so you'll notice that I'm actually mixing my resin right on the window pane right on my project. Normally, I wouldn't do that, but when you work with such big pieces like this, sometimes it's easier. So that's fine. Just be careful not to spill resin everywhere. We're only putting in resin on the left four panes. So if you spill a little bit there, it's not as big of a deal, but the right two panes are going to be a chalkboard, which means we really don't want resin and we just spilled some. So if you spill some resin, just make sure to clean it up while it's wet and you shouldn't have any problems. All right, y'all, so go ahead. We're gonna move our cups over. We wanna clear off those panes so that we can actually pour resin on them. Once we have them over, they've been sitting for a minute. We're gonna use our little Wagner HT400 quick passes just pop those bubbles we don't want to heat up the resin too much but we definitely don't want bubbles then we're going to grab 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 our clear resin 
and get started. So you're going to just start pouring it on your sand and you want to make sure that you pour quite a bit over the sand, over your shells so that you really cement those things in place, especially things like your starfish that are going to stick up out of the resin. You want to make sure that they're really glued in place and the best way to do that is by flooding them with resin. Now we'll start with our color. Of course, ocean waves go from lightest by the beach to darkest out where the deeper water is. So start with your light teal. Since we're going on a diagonal, we're going to do a triangle shape and then move to the next pane and also do a triangle shape. If you're doing a piece that's horizontal or vertical, you'll want to do stripes instead of triangles, but it's the same basic technique go ahead and do all three parts with your light teal. You don't really need to save any resin, so go ahead and really use every last drop, scrape out your cup, and don't leave anything in the cup. Perfect. I'm going to go ahead and apologize now for the amount of times you're going to see my head in this video. This is a big piece. I'm having to kneel over top of it, and I just didn't quite realize my head was in the shot. Hope you guys like my hair. It's very frizzy. <laughs> At least you guys know it's me, right? I mean, nobody else is doing my projects. All right, so now we're gonna keep going. You can see I'm doing the same exact thing, but with the darker teal. I'm gonna do all three triangles here. I probably need a little more resin. I'll come back with that in a second, but for now, just go ahead and scrape out that cup. You do want thin layers on your glass, too thick of a layer, and it will get too hot when it cures and potentially crack your glass, but you still want it to coat the entire surface. Now we're going to do our navy. You can see how thin it is, and that's because I'm an idiot and I did not mix my paint and shake it up well enough, so make sure you shake up your paint. Now we're going to come back and just put a little more of those two middle colors so that it really covers the whole area. Your resin will spread out and you can help with that with your stir stick, but you want it to be thick enough to actually cover. I'm going to put a little more on the clear. That'll give us some really pretty waves and then do the darker teal as well. I didn't mix any more resin for this. I just used some more of the clear that I had in my large cup. I put it in the smaller cups that already had the color and stirred it up until it was good to go. Perfect. So now I'm just gonna use my little silicone stir stick and I'm just gonna spread out the resin so that it will naturally like fill in all those gaps. So anywhere that the resin isn't quite reaching, just smooth out. Now you're gonna go ahead and blend the colors. You can use a stir stick for this, but I think that your hand with a glove is just as good. It makes it real smooth and easy to work with. And you're just gonna kind of blend it all together. It doesn't have to be perfect. We're gonna come back with a heat gun later and smooth out the edges but we just wanna blend everything in kind of a swirly pattern so that the waves will mix together. Kinda of looks to me like a seismograph. Is that the right word? Either a seismograph or a heart monitor. <laughs> looks kind of jaggedy. That's all right, we're gonna blend it together and of course, as the resin dries, it will continue to blend. Perfect, make sure when you're blending that you go from the lighter colors to the darker colors, don't start in the navy unless you're planning to switch your glove in between each section. Otherwise you'll have navy and you're clear and that's not really what we want. All right, so now take off that resin glove and we're going to come back with our heat gun. We're gonna start with the smaller heat gun. Just pass it over everything to pop the bubbles. We don't wanna heat up the resin too much, so start with the smaller heat gun, pop the bubbles, and then we'll come back with the larger heat gun to really move the waves. I'm just being very conscientious about this piece being on glass so that we don't crack the glass. If you're working on wood, it's not as big a deal. All right, so for the larger heat gun, you really just want to blend everything so that it kind of smooths out those harsh edges. 
So this part is sped up quite a bit. You're going to hold your heat gun in place till you start to see those ripples. Once you see those ripples, then move your heat gun. Perfect. So see how this starts to smooth out and really blend together? That's what we're looking for. All right. And this colored layer is just the base for our waves. So it doesn't have to be perfect. So for this first layer, we're going to go ahead and add a couple waves down where the white clear level meets the teal. And then again, a little further up. It's best to do your waves over a clear or lighter colors. So there's really no point in doing waves over the darker colors in this layer. Go ahead and hit it with your heat gun only until the, the white separates and then let it sit. And when it sits, that's when those pretty cells will come out. All right, so I'm gonna do a little bit more, like I said, just over that lighter color. You can see my head really good. And then once we finish these waves, we're going to go ahead and cover our piece and let it set for three to five hours. That way we can come back and pour another coat of resin and it will sit on top of this layer. So we're gonna let it set and then you'll notice in a couple seconds, the screen will change how much the waves really settle out over time as they dry you'd like the cells come to life y'all are you ready set beautiful all right so for the second layer we're going to start with a little navy since I didn't quite get that first layer dark enough I shook up my navy paint and we're just gonna put some navy over that top portion here so that it's a little darker when we pick up our window then we're gonna go ahead and flood the entire portion, all four panes with clear resin. If you shook up your navy properly, you don't need to add that navy. You can just do clear over all four panes from the get go. So just go ahead and pour some out and then we'll use our stir stick to really spread it into all the corners. Just a thin layer does it. Like I said before, we don't want really thick layers on those window panes. Thinner is always better when it comes to glass. Perfect. Go ahead and finish off that cup. We won't need any more. Just kind of spreading it out between all four panes. And now we'll come back with that stir stick. And really, we're just pushing it anywhere that the clear resin needs to cover. So we don't need to go all the way up onto the sand but everywhere else we want to get it into every single corner we want to make sure there aren't any dry areas like you can see up on that top left pane some little dry areas that are slowly going away we want to make sure all of those are 100 percent filled in i am completely covering that with my head just imagine with me okay guys like you know what it looks like i know this defeats the purpose of a video all right, so we're doing the right bottom pane and then we'll do the top two. It's really repetitive. Perfect. Just double checking at every angle that there aren't any dry spots. Even if you don't think there are any, move around, really take a look because some can be hiding. Resin is very glossy, so sometimes it's hard to see unless you really move to every single angle. Perfect. All right. The top right one has actually come out pretty good. So now we're going to do the same thing. We're going to go ahead and hit all those areas with our tiny heat gun. Heating up the resin will also help it spread out naturally. So any areas that you might not have gotten with your stir stick will naturally fill in. But mainly we're just trying to pop the bubbles. Perfect. Now we're gonna go ahead and add just a little bit of navy onto the clear below where we put it earlier, just so that it kind of blends like a wave and not quite such a harsh line. 
then we're going to move it with our heat gun so it blends a little smoother. We won't be able to add as many waves in this dark navy area. You could always do a third coat with just clear on this pane alone. But at the end of the day, I ended up liking how it looks with just the two layers. All right, just kind of spreading that out, smoothing out the harshness. Perfect. All right, so now we're going to do our white and we're going to start at the bottom and we're just going to put waves every three or four inches coming up it's best to really put them where the colors meet but other than that you can use your own judgment make sure that you're stringing the white as much as possible large globs are fine but they don't look quite as good as if you have it spread out a little bit more like in a line all right, so you don't want to do too many at a time. I find two is a good number. And since these panes are connected, I like to go all the way left to right before I move on. So now we're just going to hit those waves with our heat gun. You want to just hit them until you see the white start to separate and then move on. They'll start to kind of form cells after you've left them alone for five to 10 seconds. So if you don't see any cells that you like, hit them again. You can always add a little more resin if you feel it's necessary. But for the most part, I find that just hitting it with the heat gun and moving on does wonders. Like it's kind of ridiculous how amazing it turns out. And don't worry, I will put some close-ups at the end of this so that you can really see exactly what it looks like. See all those cells start to form? Perfect. I just love how it fans out. Look at that bottom right corner right now. Like you can really see the foam of the waves start to take place as the resin settles. All right, so now we're going to go right over where the light teal and the dark teal meet. We're going to continue that down. Waves aren't straight, so they don't necessarily need to go in a line. Go ahead and hit those. Once you learn the technique, guys, it's not hard. It's very repetitive. You know what to do. White heat, white heat. Perfect. It's just troubleshooting a little so this wave really fans out and doesn't stay quite in a line. So if you see it starting to bunch up like that, you can hit it not only from the bottom with the heat, but from the top and that'll force it back down a little. But look at all those cells forming. I am in love with the right side of that bottom panel. Okay, let's be honest. I'm in love with all of it. I think I need to make a million of these. Or at least put waves on all kinds of stuff. There we go. All right, foam. Get my hair blowing in the wind. I must look like a crazy person. All right, now we are going to go ahead and I just want to kind of spread that out a little. It was very clumpy. Perfect. It's always interesting to watch these videos back because uh, editing Betsy wants to tell resin Betsy to stop a lot of times. All right, so that wave we just did was very straight, so we're going to go ahead and to a really curvy wave now to compensate and of course for me I'm going to be covering the middle crosshairs of this project with a uh, aluminum sign so I really want the majority of my waves and foam to as much as possible be outside of that area so that it's visible anything under that middle crosshair section isn't going to be visible Ooh, I love how that looks. Look at the foam coming off of that. 
I know it's not really foam, okay, but it looks like foam, so that's what we're calling it, and it just is what it is. It's beautiful. We are so close to finished, y'all. All right, we're just going to add a little more to the middle here because that one section needs a little bit peeking out. Like I said, it's behind the crosshairs, so it doesn't need to be all the way down in the corner. But that top right pane just doesn't have very much foam at all. And it's not going to really work to put foam up in that navy unless you do a third coat. But this will peek out. Alrighty. So now you're really gonna just cover this up with some cardboard and you're gonna make sure that it stays free of hair until it cures for at least 24 hours. You can see me taking some hair out of the resin right there. Look over your piece really carefully. Make sure there isn't anything that will cure in there and mess up the finish. Make sure you didn't drip resin on the frame at all. Make sure everything is absolutely perfect. Do any finishing touches. I'm going to try just one up here. It won't be quite as foamy as the other ones, but you know, it'll be better than nothing. There we go. So it's not going to foam quite as much, but it's, it's better than just blue. All right, y'all. I'm going to cover this bad boy up and you will see it finish in just a minute. Can't wait. Look how good the side looks. <laughs> All right, y'all, that is it. Didn't it turn out pretty? So here's the window. Can you see me through it? The waves are very transparent. Obviously, I'll give you better close-ups because I can't even tell what you're seeing, but I absolutely love how it turned out. You can even see one of the small shells that I made on the bottom. I cannot wait to show you all the different pieces. I'm going to have a video just on how I put all the pieces of this together. Here's a hint. I glued the aluminum and the shell on with resin and you'll see all the different pieces. Until then, bye y'all.